couple of different things going on here. So to simplify it, I'm going to say that there is a, you sort of have an intake where people come in and you sort of assess like, you know, where's this person at? And I'll, I'll just briefly describe, I had a facilitated psilocybin mushroom experience 10 plus years ago down in the mountains of LA that this woman paid for me to be there. And they interviewed me and then they said, well, based on your experience and your, in our, in our, in our uh, opinion, we're going to give you six grams. And to that point, the most I'd ever done was four. Mm -hmm. So they were, they wanted to, they wanted me to stretch. And, um, and I'd have to say that it was one of the strongest experiences of my life. Um, you know, a lot of different visual phenomena and feeling phenomena. And then they did a good job over it. It was a overnight 24 hour process too. So, sure. you know, that, that's where that vetting process we were talking about with the mankind project, you know, you, if you're a, uh, what I like to say is Stephen Herod Buner has a model of the, the sensory gates. They're kind of around the thalamus. Yeah. And so you have a certain amount of information we filter out. Otherwise, we'd go crazy if we sensed everything around us, right? We could all agree on that. And then what the what different entheogens do, including cannabis, is they'll open up the filter. And then we see and perceive things that weren't normally available to us. But what I tell people also is that these other realms you're opening up to, there are entities and beings and energies and elementals in those other realms that now have access to you. And you can become a punching bag very fast if you don't know what you're doing, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's that's a great, those are two great, great pieces. One, I'll touch on the, um, the vetting process because it's extremely important. It's, it's almost the barrier of entry, so to speak, at least for me stepping into working with clients. And I'm not shy in, in having a consultation with the end result saying, I honor what you're choosing or looking to step into. It's a not fit, a good fit for me. And that could be for a variety of reasons. Mostly safety first is for me. Always, always number one. Um, and, it, and I take full responsibility to the outcomes of the people that I'm supporting. So if I'm doing anything that that might be reckless and in my judgment of reckless would be taking on a bunch of clients for the sake of money. Right. then I've just I've just totally blown the experience. And two, if I come into a narrative where I'm working with a potential client, and they tell me that they're on SSRIs or different pharmacology and whether they may be working with another health professional uh, a licensed and marriage counselor, psychologist, a psychotherapist, psychiatrist, whatever that looks like in the mental health world. If they're not there, that would be my first recommendation because what I don't want to have happen is an amplification of existing traumas that they may not be aware of. If we go that route, I, you know, I don't know the full narrative of psychosis, but if that is a possibility, it's on me to maintain that safety first to mitigate those risks. So that's that's the, the, the first piece. And once we've gone into the vetting kind of world, Ophelia chocolates are formulated for a particular outcome, but they're not in the, the macro stage. They're more into like the meso. So maybe a third of a gram up to a half of a gram, which might be pushing a threshold for somebody based on metabolic outcomes and, and other physiological elements so the microdosing are specific to having a non-perceptual experience and the program is designed specifically for individuals outcomes along with their goals meaning if i had given you one capsule and said hey craig we are sharing this experience together so i want you to take one capsule and i want you to report back anything that you're experiencing in any given moment by writing it down and journaling. The second piece is we have a, a follow-up call that you give me the data that you've experienced. And I say, well, how do you feel now? If you set, tell me that you're feeling good and you feel on point and you feel like the formulation is right for you, as well as your outcomes are, are beneficial and healthy, then I would say, all right, don't take another capsule for 24 hours. And if you can go that 24 hours without the need of having some kind of support anchor through the medicine, then go 48 hours. My goal is to support people in a way where they're not leaning into the medicine 
medicine as their savior. Because at the end of the day, all the medicine is really doing is mitigating some internal risk in terms of overthinking in those elements and giving people the ability to drop back in there to in their, their bodies to feel human again. And once they're in that state of feeling human, again, that for me, like that's where my best work takes place. That's where I feel like I'm the most creative. I'm most in connection with myself, my feelings and others, because I'm operating off of intuition and heart. So those are the outcomes that I, I really try to support my clients with without trying to blow their brains out. And I will add that I do hold one-on-one -on -one facilitated fungal guides. And I've been doing that for almost two decades now. And that's in the particular instances where people are indoctrinated into the medicine. They have a relationship with it. They have spiritual and meditative and gratitude practice surrounding their use and connection. And those are the folks that are really willing to go into the deep end of their life and into their shadows to say, okay, in order really for me to, for me to heal and to be a better person, however that looks like, I'm going to dive in. The medicine is going to show me what I need to heal. And my biggest goal would be to sit comfortably in my discomfort and be okay with that. For me, it's a true mechanism of dropping my perception of control and really just being in the state of everything. So I have an example from a, a, a question that came in today from one of my colleagues. She said, what do you think of glutathione for, uh, it was either Alzheimer's or Parkinson's. And I said, well, um, let's give me some context on that. You know, what form are you taking it? And, you know, what's the context? And so she says it's injected and then it's quote, curing the, uh, the, the syndrome. And I, and I think it was Parkinson's. And then I, my, my next question is, well, do they need to take the glutathione to stay cured or is it one or two doses and they're done? Right. So yeah. I believe what you're saying then is, you know, what we generally do is we, we generally, we seek the catharsis and then we keep, we keep seeking the catharsis, but we don't go back to what's having the catharsis. As one of my teachers used to say is who is the one perceiving, you know, who is, who are you really, who's really having the experience and move beyond the state to the one that's actually experiencing the state. So that's kind of what I hear you saying you're looking out for. Yeah, 100 percent because I can I could sit in this space of what my perception of things are or be in it. And I had this conversation uh, last night, actually, where. What came up to me was when I've gone through the veil, which has been a bunch of times, and I've sat in a lot of ayahuasca ceremonies as well, and, and those have been uh, beautiful gifts and got a lot of lessons from those. The way I can narrate this the most, and for those that have gone into the into the veil or had the ego death or experienced the everything and the nothing, even if they they smoke DMT, um, for me, the difference between me knowing that I'm having a human experience even in the void is that I still have my eyesight. I still have my human function sense of eyesight where my belief would be for me really not to to see it differently outside my human experiences but i would be in everything and not have the ability to see that i'm in it 